wearing a winter coat. It was about 70 degrees out. <laughs> the official weather report for that day, March 7th, 1983, high of 51, low of 34. It was about 70 degrees out. <laughs> On March the 7th of 83, uh, went over to meet with him, Mike Bicklin. When he originally prophesied When he originally it. prophesied all this, and it, it was, was hot outside. And the temperature was in the 70s in Kansas City on the day we met. It was about 70 degrees out. <laughs> From the end of June to the beginning of October of the year 2022, Remnant Radio did 15 episodes about the so-called Kansas City Prophets, the International House of Prayer, Mike Bickle, all of that, and the main guest was Dr. Sam Storms. My name is Joshua Lewis, and this is my co-host, Michael Roundtree. Together, we want to help you break outside of your theological echo chambers. I really like the idea of talking to a wide variety of people so that you can get out of your theological echo chambers. But in this series of shows, I don't really think they did that too much. They basically talked to the people in the echo chamber, and they just kept echoing. And he walked into Mike's office, and it basically began to tell him what God was going to do in Kansas City that was going to birth this movement. So I listened to all 15 episodes of these various programs. In fact, a number of them I listened to more than once. And this is the crux of the matter, that Bob Jones gave these prophetic words of things that did come true on very specific days with very specific details. And they're retelling these stories in order that we would all trust that God is deeply involved in the International House of Prayer movement and the movements related to it. I can't c compute that level of accuracy. So I've been going over all of these videos and working on making my own response videos literally since last year, and I still don't have one finished. So for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to focus on these three things. Number one, when Bob Jones walked into the office of Mike Bickle on March 7th of 1983, it was supposed to be a really warm day, and it was really weird because he was supposedly wearing a winter coat, even though it was warm outside, when the actual weather records show that it was actually in the 40s on that day. Number two, March 21st, 1983 was not a double winter as Bob Jones predicted it would be. It was just a regular day. It wasn't uh, snowing that day, and it also was not warm enough for the snow to melt that day. So all of the predictions about what was supposed to happen that day can't possibly be true. Number three, Mike Bickle claims that Bob Jones predicted there was going to be a big, serious drought all summer long, and that for one day out of the month, there was going to be a bunch of rain, and that was August 23rd of 1983, where it was supposedly a big rainstorm in the evening. But the weather records indicate that there was just a small rain shower at 8 o'clock in the morning. There was no big rainstorm, especially not later in the afternoon or evening. On March the 7th of 83, I went over to meet with him, Mike Bicklin. Everybody agrees. In fact, it's even in Mike Bickle's book from 1995 called Growing in the Prophetic that it was on March 7th of 1983 that Bob Jones walked into his office on a really warm day wearing a winter coat. That's the story that's told over and over and over. So in comes, it's March 7th, 1983. So it's about four months after we'd been at Kent City. In came this most unusual man walking into my office. And so it's nice and warm outside. Had been a couple weeks. This man walks in my office with a winter coat on. He comes walking in in a winter coat. Walking in as a total stranger. He's about 55 or 60 in overalls, wearing a winter coat. It was about 70 degrees out. <laughs> the official weather report for that day, March 7th, 1983, high of 51, low of 34. It was about 70 degrees out. <laughs> When he originally prophesied When he originally it. prophesied all this, and it, it was, was hot outside. Yeah, it was... On March the 7th of 83, I uh, went over to meet with him, Mike Bicklin. Here's the original cover of Mike Bickle's book, Growing in the Prophetic. You can see that it was first published in 1995. So when this book was written and these stories were being told, they were only about 11 or 12 years old at that point. So the first chapter of this book is called Confirming Prophecies, and... This is page 38 and 39, where he tells the story of how he first met Bob Jones and the whole snowstorm thing. What was it? It's a couple of flights. Let's zoom in to the middle of page 38 and hear how things happened in Mike Bickle's own words. The first time I met Bob Jones was the 7th of March, 1983. He walked into my office with a winter coat on. The reason this was strange was because the snow was long gone and the temperature was in the 70s in Kansas City on the day we met. It was about 70 degrees out. <laughs> Here is the weather page from the Kansas City Times on March 8th of 1983, where they're telling you what the temperatures were the day before. 
And if we zoom in here, you can see that the temperatures that day were a little bit different than the government numbers. They probably have their own way of keeping track of the temperatures at the newspaper, but it's not even close to being in the 70s. Here you can see that I'm typing the city, the date, the year into the National Weather Service website. And it's really easy to do. You just Google the weather for Kansas City for the date you want, and you'll come up with a handful of websites, and you'll see the same data. Here's a really handy website called the Weather Underground, and you can see that it's possible to simply type in the date you're looking for, the year you're looking for, and you can see all of the weather data from that time and place. And as you can see, the temperature was at the warmest at about 1 in the morning, and it kept dropping throughout the day into the 40s. It actually got into the 30s by the evening. And those little places where it drops to zero is just a, a few hours in the day where they don't have data for that particular hour but it was not even close to being in the 70s on March the 7th of 1983. Let's go back to Mike Bickle's 1995 book and look at page 38 again. I'm going to read part of this to restate the story again. During this first meeting, Bob prophesied that God was going to raise up a prophetic church in Kansas City and that he would be used in its foundation. He claimed that the Lord would confirm this prophecy with a sign in nature. He told me that on the first day of spring, a sudden snow would come, and at this time, he would sit around a table with the leaders of our new church, and we would accept him. I didn't take the prophecy seriously, since I was sure Bob was the false prophet I had been warned about. I dismissed the matter, thinking that anyone who prophesied his own acceptance had to be a false prophet. Now, notice the next sentence, but I still thought it was strange to see a man wearing a heavy winter coat during such warm weather. I don't know what Mike Bickle was actually talking about. Did he make this up? Is he getting his dates confused? We have no way of knowing. The one thing we do know is that he's been telling this story for 40 years. And it's just not true. No one's bothered, apparently, to check the weather records to see if this could possibly be true. On March the 7th of 83, I went over to meet with him, Mike Bickle and some of them. The Lord had told me to wear a coat, a heavy one. It would be a sign uh, that that there'd be a double winner that year. There are multiple things wrong with number two. This prediction is actually different depending on which version you listen to. Sometimes the prediction is that the snow will come and that will be the fulfillment of a prophetic word, but other times it's that the snow will come and it will melt on the same day, or it's just that the snow will melt on that day. And on top of that, they call it the first day of spring when it's actually the day after the first day of spring. But wait, there's more on top of those errors. The day itself didn't have any snow. It didn't have any snow coming and it didn't have any snow melting. There was no snow activity whatsoever on the day when all the snow activity was supposed to be taking place. And uh, he says, he walked in. I said, hello, my name's Mike. He didn't look at me in the eye. He looked around. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. This is it. I knew it was it. <laughs> I said, excuse me? This is it? He goes, yes. He goes, on the first day of spring, which was in a couple weeks because it's early March, when the snow melts, they will sit around the table and accept me. And then Bob says to him, and I want to quote the words, quote, the Lord says that on the first day of spring, when the snow melts, they will sit around the table and they will accept you. I said, who? who? Who's going to accept you? He said, you will, with your own mouth, you will call me a prophet on that day. He said, at the first day of spring, when the snow melts. There's talk of a blizzard. Well, we may catch a break, and that blizzard's going to blow right by us. They'll sit around the table, and they will accept me. There are multiple versions of this snowstorm story that was supposed to happen on the first day of spring. And even though there's multiple versions of the story with multiple conflicting details, none of these stories match the actual weather records. But let me read what Mike Bickle wrote in his book, looking at the uh, top of the right-hand side there. Art had intended to fly back on Sunday after the church service, but his small private plane was grounded due to bad weather. At about 9 p.m. that night, Art suddenly insisted on seeing Bob again. We all gathered at my house from 10 p.m. until 3 a.m. It was an incredible evening. I was overwhelmed at some of the things God revealed to Bob about private issues and personal prayers in my life. I suddenly blurted out, Bob, I'm thankful that Art insisted on our meeting tonight. I really believe that you are truly prophetic. Bob smiled as he reminded me that he already knew we would accept him on the first day of spring and that he had prophesied this the first day we met. 
It was a true prophecy. The date was 21st of March, the first day of spring. Art had been delayed by the sudden snow. We were all sitting around the table, and I had just accepted him with my own mouth. All of it happened just as Bob said the Lord told him it would. Now let's zoom in on the last paragraph. Uh, I will be referring to that footnote, which is actually very deceptive, but I will do that a little bit later. Let's read this, this last paragraph. The unexpected snow on the 21st of March was predicted precisely by Bob to confirm the prophetic vision that God was raising up a prophetic church in Kansas City and that Bob Jones would be used in its foundation. The small but significant sign in the sky, or heavens, was the prediction of a snow that would suddenly come exactly on the 21st of March, the first day of spring. This snow surprised Kansas City after several weeks of unseasonably warm weather. But this whole thing is just a story. The weather records don't have any correlation to the stories being told. There was no snow on the 21st of March, and there was almost no snow on the 20th of March, and there was just a small amount of snow on the 19th of March, seven-tenths of an inch. The maximum amount of snow that could have been on the ground at all was that one inch you see by the question mark, and that was on the 20th. And by the 21st, the Weather Service refers to the amount of snow as trace, which is basically like a light dusting of snow at best. What is going on? Well, I don't know, Phil. Perhaps it's that giant blizzard we're not supposed to get. If you're like me, you're probably asking yourself, how can Mike Bickle be so wrong or so loose with these details or so incomplete and inaccurate with his details? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because everything he's saying is just coming off of his memories. Here's how Sam Storms explains it. I think it was in about 1996 or 97. Um, Mike and I sat down. I think we did it over three days. And I sat with my laptop. Mike paced the room and told every one of these stories in Dictated detail. Stories. And I would follow up questions. I'd say, what did that mean? How did it happen? How was it confirmed? And that's how all of this documentation came to pass. And So Mike Bickle paced the room for three days telling stories. And Sam Storms wrote those stories down, and that's considered documentation. That's just one man writing down the recollections of another man. There's no documentation whatsoever. Doing something like this is actual documentation. You're using the weather records to document what actually took place, and then you can compare those records with what you're claiming took place. In these sessions, I'm going to be more telling stories in the spirit of prophetic declarations. This is from a Mike Bickle video called Intro to Bob Jones, Paul Kane, and End Time Revival. This is what he does. He tells stories. And the details of these stories change from version to version. Sometimes the details change within one session itself, not even just from one year to a different year. But if you uncritically buy into everything you're hearing, you will wind up saying things like this. We mentioned Bob Jones at the top of the show. You mentioned him just now. You cannot tell the story of the Kansas City Prophets and IHOP without talking about Bob Jones. So throughout this series, we're going to be talking a lot about the guy. Mm -hmm. And frankly, his prophetic gift, like you just said, was unprecedented in, in my generation. I'm hearing these stories, I go, that's not a thing. Guys like Paul Kane and Bob Jones, I, I, I can't compute that level of accuracy. This is like buying into the accuracy of a folktale, something that you just want it to be true. Like the legend of John Henry. Now, researchers actually believe that there was a real guy who worked on the railroad back in the 1800s named John Henry. But it turned into a folktale. And the legend is full of fictitious elements that have very little correlation with the real person, John Henry. And of course, folklore is not supposed to be true. It's a completely different genre. This is supposed to be truth-telling. Christians are supposed to be people who are very concerned about what is true and what is not true. Now, this is a video that's right on the IHOP website, and it's supposed to be helping you to understand why the prophetic events of 1983 are still important. And what you're going to see is that even within his own story, there are glaring mistakes that actually conflict with each other within the story itself. And this is all connected to March 21st and the so-called snowstorm that didn't actually exist. The Spirit's resting on me. I want to talk to him. He goes, I got to catch... He, he came in in a little four-passenger airplane. He goes, I got to fly out at six o'clock in the morning, but I, I want to meet him. Is there any possible way? First of all, I want to say this video is out of sync on the IHOP website, so I'm just going to leave it as it is. But this is a completely different story than the one that he normally tells and the one that's in his book. 
In the version of the story that he normally tells, like in his book here, Art couldn't fly out on Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening because the snow was too bad for his plane to be able to take off, and that's why he wound up staying, and that's why he said, well, as long as I'm here, I might as well meet with that Bob Jones guy. But what we just heard Mike Bickle say just a second ago was that, hey, my, my plane doesn't leave until morning. Why don't we go see that Bob Jones guy? I'll play it again. He goes, I got to fly out at six o'clock in the morning, but I, I want to meet him. Is there any possible way? I said, yeah. You know, he gave me his phone number because when Bob left my office, he said, here's my phone number. You're going to need it. And he wrote it down. So now let's listen to Mike Bickle in the same video, just a little bit later, tell the story completely different. He says it's because of the sudden unexpected snowfall that they wound up having this meeting together. And I said, isn't this remarkable that, Art, you stayed overnight, your plane couldn't fly out because the weather got a little bit uh, uh, bad, and his little four-passenger plane had to stay, and we met, and the pastor canceled. And Bob says, I told you three weeks ago when I met you this would happen. I said, what do you mean? He said, what's the day? He said, today's the first day of spring. Why didn't the airplane fly? Uh, go out. He goes, open your window. What's happening? The snow is melting. He said, I told you on the first day of spring when the snow melts, I'll sit before you and you'll accept me as a prophet with your own mouth. You just did it. Quote, the Lord says that on the first day of spring when the snow melts, they will sit around the table and they will accept you. So later that night, Mike and Art are scheduled to go to another church in Kansas City and the speaker there cancels. And so they had to cancel the meeting. So Art says, listen, he said, um, I was supposed to fly out tonight. He had a private plane. And he said, but it snowed. It was a late snow in, Mar in late March. He said, I I I'm grounded. I can't get out. So that was Sam Storms repeating what he heard from Mike Bickle about what was going on on March 20th of 1983. Here's the actual weather records. You can see that the temperature was hovering around 30 degrees. And after 6 p.m., it started to drop a bit. Again, where it dips down to zero, that's because there's no data for those hours. Now, the second graph down, the blue one, is precipitation. It's snow. If you look at the very left side of the chart, it looks like, oh, yeah, it's at the top of the chart. Well, that's five one hundredths of an inch. And that incredibly tiny amount of snow ended at about 3 or 4 in the morning. But after that tiny amount of snow early in the morning... We're supposed to believe that Art Katz, 10, 12, 15 hours later, was snowed in. There's no way he could fly out. And that's why we had this miraculous meeting with Mike Bickle and Bob Jones. And he said, but it snowed. It was a late snow in, Mar in late March. He said, I I I'm grounded. I can't get out. Quote, the Lord says that on the first day of spring, when the snow melts, they will sit around the table and they will accept you. First day of spring, when the snow melts. So they're sitting around the table. It's like one in the morning. And Bob says... What day is it? Mike says, well, it's March 21st. He said, no, what day is it? He said, well, it's the first day of spring. Look out the window. What's happening? Mike looks out. The snow was melting. The snow had come that kept Art Katz from leaving, which the <laughs> Lord used to providentially orchestrate the get-together in the first place. God's providence is all over this. Except there seems to be a time when Mike Bickle accidentally let it slip that Art Katz wasn't going to leave till the morning anyway, and it kind of ruins the whole snow story prophecy thing. He goes, I got to fly out at six o'clock in the morning, but I, I want to meet him. Is there any possible way? Mike said, yeah, the snow's melting. Don't you remember what I told you on the first day of spring when the snow melts, we'll sit around the table where they were and you will accept me as a prophet. He said, at the first day of spring, when the snow melts, they'll sit around the table and they will accept me. So now we're supposed to believe that somewhere between one o'clock in the morning to maybe about three o'clock in the morning, Bob Jones says, look out the window. See how the snow is melting? Here's the actual temperatures from that time of day. It was below 25 degrees. So it's impossible for snow to melt. Unless Sam Storms was out there with a blowtorch pulling tricks on everybody, this story cannot possibly be true. You're hypocrites, all of you. Notice how confident this writing is. The unexpected snow on March 21st was precisely predicted by Bob to confirm the prophetic vision that God was raising up a prophetic church in Kansas City and that Bob Jones would be used in its foundation, except that there was no snow at all on March 21st. And that wasn't the first day of spring. And I remember thinking, this man is so off. I mean, I had no way of understanding what he said. Mike Bickle makes a big deal out of how skeptical he was, and this makes it easier to trust his stories because it appears that he was convinced by factual events. 
We are tempted to just believe everything he and Sam Storm says as a result. Instead of blindly trusting these stories, I want to make a few points. Number one, if it was okay for Mike Bickle to be skeptical, then he shouldn't be too upset when we're skeptical too. Show us the weather reports, Mike. Most importantly, regardless of the uh, specifics of some of these predictions, none of these stories point us back to Christ and him crucified for our sins. These are, at best, a big distraction from true biblical faith. And Mike Bickle has made it really clear over many decades now that these prophetic words really are pointing people to this very new and different sort of move of God. Here's a clip of him that was recently re-uploaded. This is actually from 2003 when he was a lot louder and more energetic. We're going to have a massive shift in the way the church sees God. For the spirit and the bride to say, come, and they're saying, come to Jesus, but it's not the spirit and the body of Christ saying come. It's the spirit and the body in a bridal identity. They have to have a new revelation of God. There's a shift. There's a radical change coming in the way we view God. These 20-year-old claims don't ring very true right now, do they? No, it's a guy who's basically boasting about all the stuff that was going to happen, and it has not happened. Whether he intended to or not, he has been pointing people away from the finished work of Christ on the cross. And he's been pointing people away from the final authoritative word of God. There's a radical change coming in the way we view God. Here's an excerpt from that same 1995 book where he claims that he heard directly from God. The Lord simply said, I will change the understanding and expression of Christianity in the earth in one generation. It was a simple, straightforward statement, but I felt God's power with each word as I received the Spirit's interpretation. So God told Mike Bickle that he was going to change the expression of Christianity throughout the world in one generation. That was over 40 years ago. This is how Mike explains what God was telling him 40 years ago. The phrase, the understanding of Christianity, meant the way Christianity is perceived by unbelievers. In the early church, people were afraid to associate casually with believers, partly because of the displays of supernatural power. In the 1990s, most unbelievers consider the church to be irrelevant. God will change the way unbelievers view the church. They once again will witness God's wonderful yet terrifying power in the church. They will have a very different understanding of Christianity before God is finished with this generation. You know, it would have been really handy if this new generation would have done something about COVID. Seems like they could have used all that uh, supernatural power. They had a perfect opportunity and they blew it. Okay, now getting back to the third item that I told you I was going to discuss in this video. And that is Bob Jones' prophetic word that there's going to be a drought over the summer and there's going to be a one-day event on August 23rd where it's going to rain, but then the drought will continue. Now, this story is similar to the other ones in that there are parts of it that are partly true, but in general, the story that gets retold is really uh, greatly exaggerated compared to the historical facts that we see from the weather data. Now, there was a drought in the Kansas City area that started really um, about the first week of July. And so here is the newspaper from the date of August 24th. This is the day after there was supposed to have been this heavy downpour that was a uh, fulfillment of Bob Jones' prophecy. Now look at this cute picture of this lady fishing in the rain. Scattered showers across the metropolitan area did not keep Amanda Howard from her regular Tuesday fishing at the Lake of the Woods in Swope Park. Rainfall amounts totaled 0.26 of an inch at the Kansas City International Airport, 0.03 of an inch at the downtown airport, and 0.32 of an inch at Richards Gebauer Air Force Base. Tuesday's showers provided a short break, but the heat will be on again today in the Kansas City area. No talk of a downpour of any sort. Now here's one of those charts from the website called Weather Underground. You can see that on August 23rd, there was at 8 a.m., looks like about two tenths of an inch of rain. And from the National Weather Service, here's the August 1983 chart for the entire month. You'll see I have, with the black marker, I highlighted the days that there was rain. You can see on the 23rd, there was 0.26 inches of rain. So you can see there was about six or seven or eight times where it kind of rained, but the uh, totals for each of those days were very small. And the best day of all, the 23rd, still wasn't very much rain at all. This was a very dry month. Okay, now that you've seen all that data, let's listen to Mike Bickle as he describes what was supposed to have happened on August 23rd of 1983. We're waiting for August 23rd. June goes by. 
July goes by, August, long summer of 83, horrible long summer. <coughs> August 23rd, we called a meeting, had a meeting at 7 o'clock that night. And about five minutes till 7, I mean at noon, it looks hot, sunny, not a chance. And at about 7 o'clock that night, because it's the time of the meeting, a torrential downpour of rain came. And I mean, we are so excited because 23 months earlier, a prophetic man said, as surely as God has precise times and seasons for this nation, he will show you when the rains will come in the natural in this city. And so surely he knows when the rains will come in this nation at an appointed time, and he will not be a day late. And I tell you, when August 23rd came, we were so excited. We were jumping and shouting, and it only rained about 20, 30 minutes. I don't even know, but it was, I don't know how long it rained, maybe 15, 20, 25 minutes, but it rained so intense, the people out in the parking lot, right when the meeting started, could not come in. It was too, the, the rain was so intense, you could not walk through it. And the Lord gave his excla ex ex exclamation point. And then Bob, of course, he's so happy that night. He goes, I told you it would happen. I heard it audibly from the Lord. This is not a guessing game. This is precision. The Lord is orchestrating something far beyond the scope of what you're understanding. He's talking about a global move of God and the salvation of Israel and the second coming of Jesus and the great end time harvest, not a little revival in Kansas City, but you get to be a part of a much bigger story that he's, he's orchestrating around the earth. You get to have a part in it. Okay, I'm back to reading the same book that I've been using this whole time uh, over on the right side. I called a friend in our church, Steve Lambert, at high noon. I said that it didn't look much like rain, Steve laughingly replied, you better hope it rains or you'll have to leave town. I couldn't see what was so funny. Our church was scheduled together for a meeting the evening of August 23rd. Just before the church meeting began, there came a tremendous downpour of rain for almost an hour. Everyone was shouting and praising God. The drought continued the next day and lasted another five weeks. Three months in all, as prophesied, with the exception of August 23rd. It was the third driest summer on record for Kansas City in approximately 100 years. Well, if you've watched this video up to this point, first of all, thank you for watching, but you're probably guessing what I'm gonna do next, and you're right, I'm going to test the claims once again to see if they hold true to the actual weather records. Well, I found this really nifty chart from the Weather Service, and it shows 100 years of droughts. If you move your cursor over it, you can see the uh, darkest warm red orange colors at the top those represent the driest years and of course the bottom part represents the wettest times now look at the year 1983 now you can only see 1982 and 1984 so i put a handy little arrow there so you can see what's supposed to be 1983 and this is what mike bickle describes as the third driest summer in kansas city in approximately 100 years that might be true but it actually doesn't look that bad compared to much more serious droughts on other years. Here's how Mike Bickle described this whole drought event in his book. On May 28th of 1983, the last day of the 21 days of prayer and fasting, Bob Jones stood up in a group of about 500 people and gave a dramatic prophetic word. He said that there would be a drought over Kansas City for three months during that summer. Indeed, a drought did occur from the end of June to the end of September that year. He went on to say that it would rain, however, precisely on August 23rd. And now going back to that paragraph that I read just a little bit earlier about uh, what happened on the day of August 23rd. It says everyone was shouting and praising God. The drought continued the next day and lasted another five weeks, three months in all, as prophesied, with the exception of August 23rd. Well, we should see this in the weather records, correct? We should see three months of no rain except for August 23rd. Let's take a look at the actual weather records and see what it looks like. First of all, let's look at the precipitation totals for Kansas City for the entire year. Now, he made this prediction at the end of May that there was going to be a three-month drought. Well, if we look at the month of May, that there was plenty of rain in May, and there was also plenty of rain in June. July was absolutely terrible. Barely any rain at all. August wasn't much better, but September had almost two inches of rain. 
Now, remember that Mike Bickle said there was a big downpour on August 23rd, which was actually just a shower. But he said after that, there was five weeks of drought. Let's look at the records and see if that's true. Let's go into just a little bit of detail. The month of May was actually a very good month for rain. It was above average. So they had a little bit of a surplus of rain in May. And then in June, they had plenty of rain right up to the last week of June. Mike Bickle said that the drought started at the end of June, but that's not quite correct. If you're going to be totally fair and honest, you'd have to say that the actual drought began after the 4th of July. And it was a bad drought for that time period. Now here's the month of August again, and I've got the uh, date of the 23rd circled, but there were a couple of other days in the following week where it did rain, but very little rain, but it still was a little bit of rain. But Mike Bickle said that after August 23rd, there was five weeks of no rain, that the drought continued for five weeks. That means there should be no rain at the end of August, and there should be no rain at all for the entire month of September. But here is the month of September, and it was not a great month for rain, but it wasn't a month of total drought either. It was roughly half the normal amount of rain for September. So again, he was exaggerating quite a bit when he said that there was no rain for three months in a row. And yet Bob kept coming with these undeniable, inescapable, empirically verifiable confirmations of his prophetic words. Empirical, based on observation or experience. Verifiable, capable of being proven as true or real. Well, I tried to do that with these various weather-related prophetic words, and they're the opposite of being empirical and verifiable. When you look into all the details of the story, there is a way that you can imagine it being sort of true, but not totally true. There's exaggeration, there's a misuse of dates, and there are details that don't match up at all. They, they conflict with each other. They tell different versions of these same stories. Now let's talk about this footnote at the bottom from the Kansas City Times on the 21st of March of 1983. The title says, Gentlest of Winters Goes Out with a Blast of Snow, which seems to really confirm that there was this big blast of snow in Kansas City. Although the article was in the Kansas City Times, the actual blast of snow that they were talking about was not in Kansas City. The winter of 1983, a season of record high temperatures and below average precipitation, departed with a final bow of snow and brisk cold winds. Winter officially ended at 10.39 p.m. Sunday as the sun crossed the equator and began to creep into the northern hemisphere, bringing longer periods of daylight and warmer temperatures. In other words, spring started on the 20th, not the 21st. It's the vernal equinox, one of two times a year when the length of days and nights are equal, or simply the first day of spring. But on Saturday, some areas in northern and western Missouri received up to four inches of snow, according to the National Weather Service. Kansas City International Airport received one inch of snow, and one and a half inches fell downtown. Saturday's storm was a reminder that despite the last three months of occasional balmy weather, winter still means snowballs and slippery streets. The area received the last gasp of the storm that dumped up to two feet of snow in Colorado and Wyoming on Tuesday before moving on to Iowa and Minnesota. In other words, the blast of snow wasn't in Kansas City. Don't you listen to the weather. While snow last week in Colorado blocked highways, downed power lines, and forced schools to close, Kansas City area residents enjoyed temperatures that climbed into the 70s, which is referring to what happened on March 15th. But even Saturday's snowfall was typical of this winter's weather. Jet streams to the north, which have spared the Midwest some unpleasant, let me get to the next page, unpleasant winter carrying most of the severe weather away from the Midwest. The snowfall Saturday turned to rain in west central Missouri as Boonville reported only a trace of snow and 1.7 inches of rain, said Nick Scott, a forecaster for the Weather Service in Kansas City. Mr. Scott added that most of the area's snow melted when it hit the ground. Skipping to the end of the next paragraph, that this trooper said that the highways were just wet. We haven't had any problems. I guess we've been lucky. And the third to the last paragraph, down in the middle at the bottom, although today is the first full day of spring, don't put away your heavy coats and snow tires. We are still in a winter-type atmosphere, Mr. Scott said. It is not unusual to have snow in April. Only four years out of the past 11 didn't have snow in the month of April. He's saying this near the end of March. But here's what Mike Bickle said about the month of March. But he has a winter coat on. And the, the uh, news said that the spring had come early and the winter was over. For reasons that I will not pretend to completely understand, Mike Bickle 
has a bad habit of making broad brush statements, overgeneralizing, exaggerating, and even saying things that aren't actually true at all in order to propel forward with his idea that this thing he's doing is a great move of God and it's been proven by all these events that were supposed to have taken place. At least in this particular video, I want you to see that when it comes to these weather-related prophetic words, the weather records paint a completely different picture than what they're telling us. But again, I want to reiterate that I'm not saying he's a deliberate liar. This guy is not somebody like a Kenneth Copeland. He's not even in that category at all. And these guys, I think, are sincere in wanting to clean up some of the abuses in the charismatic movement. But in the case of all these interviews, I really wish they would have done a lot more homework and some simple research like I've shown you in this video, because I think there are some good questions, some difficult questions that need to be asked of Sam Storms and of Mike Bickle. And I do plan on making further videos that will address some of the other issues that I have with this 15 part series of interviews with Sam Storms and Mike Bickle. But for now, thank you so much for watching and listening to all of these thoughts and ideas. And I really hope that you will be encouraged to do your own research, your own homework, and not to just take somebody's word for something, especially when it's so important regarding what God may or may not be doing in the world today. It's not a lie if you believe it.